Hey guys, so uh, upon further inspection, I went ahead and I kept uh, measuring all these bearings for clearance on this crank, continuing on from the, the video I posted on Friday. Um, and uh, this is why you measure things, because I started getting some really inconsistent results. And uh, given the, the uh, level of, of power I was looking for, which, which was pretty mild on this engine, I, I kind of went with some cheaper bearings, some OE replacement bearings, which turned out to be total junk. So um, what happened was I was getting very inconsistent measurements, and um, so I, I was trying to get to the bottom of it. At first I wasn't thinking it was the bearing, I was thinking it was something I did. Um, and then I went and borrowed some, some better bearings that uh, my next door neighbor had. And uh, I, I threw those in there. And they're oversized bearings, uh, so they wouldn't actually work for my application. But just putting them in there and measuring them, all of a sudden everything was consistent and everything was right. So then I started measuring the thickness of the, the bearings I had. And the thickness of the bearing actually varied over a, th uh, over a thousandth of an inch. Um, so, these bearings are shit. This is the brand. Let's see, can you see that? Glyco, don't buy those. Those are fucking garbage. Anyway, so I've uh, gone ahead and I measured all the bores, I measured all the crank journals, and I, uh, I measured my rod, rod bores and everything, and uh, basically did the math and I went, in, went ahead and ordered some uh, better quality bearings. I ordered some ACL race bearings. Um, not that much more money, maybe 50 bucks more. Um, probably less than that actually. And, uh, and I know I'll be getting a quality product. So had I plastic gauged this motor, I might not have caught that. And uh, you know, I, I would have slapped the crank in there and you know, in this application, most likely the crank would have been actually locked up. And uh, if, if, you know, if somebody that didn't know what they were doing was doing that, um, you know, they'd probably spin a bearing on startup. So uh, this is why blueprinting your engine is important. Uh, and, uh, you know, take the time, measure stuff. And when something's not right, figure it out because that motor would have been junk as soon as I started it. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go on to some other things while I wait for bearings to show up. So I'll be doing some videos on that. Uh, probably, I'll probably just attach it to this video and we'll go forward. But, uh, anyway, wanted to share that with you guys. So keep an eye out, measure stuff. Okay, so now that I got a really good rod balancing setup going, uh, I'm going to go back through these rods and I'm just going to kind of go through the process and show you guys how I do that uh, in, in order to get consistent results and actually, uh, you know, get a rod that, that is truly balanced. Um, these ones, I actually, I think they're actually a little bit off. Um, I think the new setup I have going here is a little bit more accurate and maybe even the scale is a little bit less finicky and a little more accurate uh, than the old scale I had. Um, so I'm going to go back through these rods and I'm going to rebalance them and uh, I'll just take you guys through the process and, and show you how that's done. So uh, I already showed this in another little quick video but the little setup I have is uh, I made this little, this little deal out of shim stock, um, cut a little V into it, deburred it really good and then glued it to this plate. Uh, the plate actually has double sticky on the bottom bottom edges of it so that it can't move on the scale. The scale has rubber feet so it can't move either. Uh, so that it will always maintain the same location. It won't move and it won't skew my, my weight measurements. Uh, I showed you guys my rod balancing jig before. Um, homemade deal. Uh, so anyway, you guys can make something or buy something as far as uh, a jig for balancing. Uh, but the setup is kind of up to you in, in order to make it accurate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start going through these and writing some numbers on them.
So you want to make sure you get them on exactly the same every time. So three, 371 grams even on that one. Now I'm going to take it off and put it back on, make sure I can repeat the number. And I can already tell that it moved a little bit, but 370.5 grams. Take it off, put it back on, 371. Three hundred seventy one point two, so what I'm looking for is just a consistent result. Three hundred seventy one point zero, three hundred seventy one point zero. So I think that if I, uh, if I put all the rods on the same way, like I did that one, I'm just going to write right on the rod with some Sharpie, 371.0, uh, then I should get fairly consistent results. So let's try the next one and see where we're at. I'm going to try to put it on the exact same way that I did that one. Three seventy one point five. Three seventy point seven. So I'm getting a little bit of a deviance here. That seemed like the sweet spot. Three seventy point five. Seventy point four point five. So once you can get a number to repeat several times, I would go with that number. Three seventy point five. And just continue on down the line doing that. the things I don't really like about these rods that I have is I don't know if you can see that but it's actually got a groove machined into the bushing and that's kind of messing with my rod balancer a little bit because it's not a flat surface to sit on that bearing so it kind of kind of tries to make it rock back and forth a little bit on there uh, and I also don't like that really because it takes away some of the surface area that that your oil is going to be able to load on on your piston pin there um, so I don't really like that about these, these cheap rods, but, uh, you know, they're cheap and the engine's not going to make a ton of power, so, uh, I'm going to run them anyway, but, uh, you know, just something that caught my eye and I don't, I don't really prefer, but, uh, anyway, we're going to keep going here. So this one's coming out at 370.4. You can see how sensitive this is. I can just tap this just a little bit. Now it's 370.9. Tap it the other way. Yeah, it's coming out 370.9. But basically, if if even the bearing loads loads the rod a little differently, you'll you'll end up with a different result. So it's it's pretty damn sensitive. So I you know just keep playing with it until you guys figure out how to get a, a reliable result. Three 
370.8. So I'm going to say that this one's right at 370.8. I've gotten that result several times. Okay, so I have 371 even, 370.5, 370.4, and 370.8. So we've got basically a variance of, uh, of half a gram, so five-tenths of a gram overall. Uh, so I'm going to go back through these and kind of reweigh them again just to double check. So yeah, it's coming in at 371. So I'm getting a I'm getting a really accurate result with this, more accurate than the last time I balanced these things. So, uh, so my lightest one is 370.4. So I'm going to try to bring the rest of them down to that. And four tenths of a gram is not very much. So I've actually got a rod here that's uh, quite a bit heavier than the rest uh, by almost a full gram uh, over the lightest, the lightest rod on the big end. So, uh, and I can tell that that one started out heavy because I've already done some grinding on it. Uh, so I'm going to go and I'm going to take these corners to the belt sander and just try to take a little bit of weight off of that end in equal equal amounts all the way around the rod. Um, it's not going to take much, so uh, be careful not to overdo it. So that little tiny bit of grinding I did took off three tenths of a gram. So needs a little more. That took off another two tenths. So we're down to 371, and we want to be about, about three tenths below that, about uh, 370.7. Okay, so I've gotten, I've gotten these three rods uh, within a, about a tenth of each other, tenth of a gram. Uh, I still have one heavy one, so I'm going to keep working on that one. Uh, taking off just a little bit at a time, um, so I'll be back. Okay, so about 20 trips back and forth to the belt sander, 
and I've gotten all the all the big ends to weigh within a tenth of each other. In fact, they're all rate reading 370.8. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think that this setup is pretty reliable. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and take all this stuff off here for the rods, and I'm going to balance the the full weight of the rod. And if they don't balance the same, I'm going to take weight off the little end, off, off this end. And that's how you get the little end to balance because if the whole rod, if this, these ends all weigh the same, and then the rods weigh the same, then the little ends must all weigh the same. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I just had a little bit of double sticky on the back of there so it wouldn't move. Three zero on the scale. Try to make sure you put these on the scale in the same position every time. Okay, so since I balanced these once before, uh, they're all coming in really, really close. Uh, with the exception of this one, it's about two tenths heavy. Um, so I'm going to go take just a smidge off this end and that'll be it. There we go. They're all weighing in at exactly 608.8, and all the big ends are weighing in at uh, 60 or 370.7. So uh, they are pretty much on the money, and uh, that's that's basically how you do that. So on to the next thing.